there's a chip shortage. No, not potato chips, not corn chips. That might honestly be way worse. But silicon chips, there's just nowhere nearly enough supply to meet all of the demand. Can't get them for cars, can't get them for consoles, maybe soon, can't even get them for phones. But what does that mean for the next iPhone? Let's call up industry analyst Ben Beharin and find out. Sponsored by Brilliant. Essentially, if you these categories we're talking about, right? PCs, um, you know, cars that are trying to be more autonomous, uh, obviously smartphones, et cetera, like they all make products on the leading edge. And that's generally done at TSMC, vast majority done at TSMC, and then a little bit at Samsung. And the reality is they're just out of space, right? It's not just that we went into COVID. Yes, that happened. Factories shut down for a good month to two months. So that already initialized some delays. And then on top of that, we are dealing with unprecedented demand in smartphones and PCs and in some other categories as, as well. So essentially, it's very, very hard to find chips. And those foundries like TSMC and Samsung don't have excess capacity for new chips, new customers, new products. They're just trying to catch up with the demand that they have on these these existing products that they're trying to make. So it's it's impacting everybody. I mean, we're seeing delays of product launches across the board because of this, but the root of it is simply we don't have enough semiconductor manufacturing capacity to meet the demand of today's, you know, broad consumer and tech environment. And we heard even before the current reporting on this that for example, Apple bought so much of TSMC's five nanometer process that other customers had to go to Samsung instead just because they, they couldn't get enough of that node. And rumors are they're doing the same thing with three nanometers. Yeah. yeah, no, that's absolutely right. I mean, Qualcomm's a good example because Qualcomm does dual source their current Snapdragon parts. So they do have some of their 800 chips are made at TSMC and some are made at Samsung. On And the difference there is that their TSMC chips are made on seven nanometer their Samsung chips are made on eight nanometers. So there's not a lot of performance difference, but Samsung doesn't have a seven. So essentially uh, Qualcomm bought up that supply. So the reality is that I think you'll see more companies by necessity have to work with TSMC and Samsung and probably Intel in order to meet demand for, for their products and just make sure they can make make their chips at any number of those foundries. So when you hear about you know companies like Samsung or automotive companies having trouble sourcing chips or the PS5, things like that, how do you see that affecting Apple, if at all? Is it more about a when, or is it possible that they've just logistically managed this well enough that it won't be as perceptible to consumers? There is no one on in this industry who sells at scale premium computers than Apple. And so someone has to essentially be willing to afford the latest cutting edge process, which is not cheap. In fact, there's been a lot of news about TSMC lately saying that they're probably going to have to increase the price of their wafer because it is more expensive and more complex. So only really, in my opinion, one customer can afford to eat into that and afford any increase in pricing at scale. So if you're TSMC, you're saying, look, I got a, a customer here who's going to sell 170, 180 million premium units a year. No one does that. They're buying this in advance. They're going to be the ones that get all these chips, right? It's just it's just how it's going to going to fall. So Apple being in control of so much premium, and then again you add Macs to that, right? So as they as they bring the Mac line into ARM and are buying products, like they're going to ship 20, 30, 40 million Macs potentially down down the line. That's again that's a large number of chips, right? In terms of of premium, Samsung Samsung doesn't sell you know maybe about that many premium smartphones worldwide. And Mac, Apple's going to do that with Mac. It's almost like they fund the new process nodes and then get priority on those nodes. And that, that avoids a lot of the congestions that other customers face. Yeah, I mean, that's the reality is they 100% do. And that's why when I, I wrote this article, you, you tweeted it, it was pretty popular about why Apple should extend an arm to Intel. And I, and I use those two words intentionally that if Apple, if Intel wanted to start making ARM processors, Apple is the only one who can work with them and afford to help Intel on the bleeding edge. And, and my argument for doing so was simply so Apple would have a United States-based semiconductor partner in case of whatever geopolitical politics might happen between China and Taiwan. You guarantee that you're okay if you have a U.S. partner. Apple's the only one who could help Intel fo fund the next node because of all the points I just made about TSMC, should, should Apple ever decide to do that. Do you foresee any large-scale issues with Apple getting the chips that they'll need for 
the 2021 products, the 2022 products before things start to balance out again? Not at large scale. I, I mean, I do think, and, and again, right, just look at this in, in the reality of prior to COVID, Apple still was up against demand restraints and supply, even when there was no issue, right? It wasn't exactly easy to go and find an iPhone 12 or 12 Pro in, in the longevity, right? So they were already up against supply constraints um, for their own products that they were making, even, even without COVID. So all, all that means is that you might see longer delays, but, but I don't think we're talking like, oh, I can't make this product anymore, or um, I need to delay the launch six months. Like I think we might be talking months or two. So, so some of those delays, the launch time delays that Apple has seen in availability might get a couple weeks longer. But to be honest with you, they're going to be the least hit out of out of all of this. Um, you know, I guess my my concern would be what about products that aren't the iPhone? So could Mac be impacted because we're talking, you know, some SKUs is only a couple million units, right? Th those are where even Apple themselves is going to have to prioritize their supply. Like A15 over M2 would make a lot of sense just strategically. Right, exactly, right. And so so with with what we expect next week with iPads, right, or perhaps something around Macs. The reality is they have to make product decisions on where they can allocate their SKUs based on availability, and they're just going to go with what is in the most demand. To get more involved with all the technologies behind Apple Silicon, to get started with everything from algorithms to neural networks and machine learning, also math, science and computer science, logic and deduction, physics, quantum mechanics, game theory, cryptocurrency, and so much more, check out Brilliant. It's a website and an app built on learning while doing and solving real challenges in real time with no memorizing long, messy formulas or fact sheets, no tests, no grades, just instant feedback that coaches you bit by bit so you can rapidly improve and learn fundamental concepts literally before you even realize it. Just go to brilliant.org slash Renee Ritchie or click the link in the description, pick a course and get started now today. And clicking on that link really helps out the channel. Hit the playlist above for a much, much deeper dive into Apple Silicon and the M1. Just everything Apple's doing to achieve so much performance and efficiency. Just hit that playlist and I'll see you in the next video.